but overall they're they're very well mannered dogs and something that i knew is that, that it could maybe help me don't don't and don't <laughs> This is Arlo and Echo, two awesome collies, and this is their dad, country music star Colt Graves, whose singles Crazy, Lonesome Roads, and Dirt On Me are available now on all streaming platforms. We get to know them and his other animals today on Industry Pets. Colt, uh, welcome to the show. Good to have you. How is everything? Everything's going great. Thank you so much for having me on. Were you always a dog person? I, I've, I've always been a dog person over a cat person. My fiance is the complete opposite. She's a cat person and man, I've just always kind of been a, a dog person up until here recently. Your dog's names are Arlo and Echo. How did you come up with their names? We were all just kind of having a discussion. It was um, my children and myself and we were trying to pick out a name. And then I think one of the kids said echo i can't remember who said it but somebody said it and we're like yeah that's a that's a good name but i tell you what where i made the mistake was arlo is echo's puppy we named him arlo so the the o is really strong and o and arlo and o and echo so training it turned into a little bit of a uh difficult <laughs> difficult time calling their names how well trained are they they do tricks oh yeah so um we had a farm in calhoun kentucky and i taught echo how to do the herding with our goats so she could do that and then arlo picked it up they are incredibly smart dogs they, they will do anything you ask them i mean it's it's unreal how smart they are so they herd the goats is there any other cool farm tricks that they do hey let's if you wake up in the morning you open the door to let the dogs out you could leave for the day and come back and they would still sit there with the goats. They would never go into the fence unless you told them and then you could tell them to and they would jump the fence to, to get in there to the to the goats. Did it take a long time to get them to that level of training? Not too terribly long. It just took more being very consistent. I had the same set of things that I would say every single time and we got into a routine and just staying in that mindset and I think that's really helped them uh, along with their training. Now they can they can choose to be stubborn sometimes and want to do their own thing but overall they're, they're very well mannered dogs. So what are some of the quirky things that they do? Arlo would probably be the one that I'll talk about here. He's just so silly and He's always looking for something that you're saying. So if say, if you're just sitting on the couch, he will literally come up and just stare at you and just wait for you. And you could, you, you could not be paying any attention to him at all. And then just turn and look at him and he'll jump and run off and come back and he'll just stare. It's hilarious to watch. So what are the top treats that your dogs love? Honestly, I'm not a huge giver of treats. And I know that that goes against what a lot of people do, but the treats that what they do love to get would be like chicken, like human food. Like if I have something off my plate, I'll, I'll toss them off. Off that but but honestly I don't do a lot of like regular standard treats keeping them on a good diet for sure what are the top three toys that your dogs love echo has an obsession over a ball she will literally play fetch all day you throw it she's going to get it so that's probably her favorite Arlo likes to run with her he just kind of does what she does he'll go after the ball and let her get it and bring it back occasionally he'll get the ball uh, and they also have a huge basket downstairs they have uh, things from like a stuffed fox and a skunk and the, a rope toy that they'll play back and forth with sometimes. It's uh, pretty cute to watch. And what are the top three places that your dogs like to sleep? Ooh, sleep so it would be bed. And in, in, in my bed, uh, I'll let them sleep up there sometimes. Uh, the worst part is I'd rather them be up beside me than, than on the bottom because you can't pull the, the, the blanket up there. Like, <laughs> freeze through the night. So that would be the number one place. Number two would be the couch. And I don't really like them on the couch except for a special occasion. But I'll wake up sometimes in the middle of the night and peek out there in the living room and see them, you know, laid up on the couch. And then the third place for Echoes, we have some cats as well, but they stay in a separate side of the house. And Echo will literally stay right by the door of where they are because she's just such in that herding mindset. She is friends with the cats, but she just knows they're in there. So she'll sit there and lay by the door. So what are your cat's names? So my cat is Penny. And Penny is the cat that is mean to everybody and beats up all the cats all the time and absolutely loves me and thinks I'm the bet her mom or something you know it's, that's how she looks at me we also have Jimmy Margo and Agnes cool so you have quite the, the pet family going on mm -hmm, for sure do the cats get along with the dogs the cats do really well I'm surprised how well they do but the cats just kind of do their own things the dogs just do their own things and don't bother each other have your cats ever brought you in anything dead <laughs> as a reward uh, so when we lived on the farm there were some mice that we would see every once in a while because at the farm you have feed and everything and it's out in the middle of the field so there's a lot of mice and uh, they'd start to bring mice up to the uh, to the back door to come in. How have your animals adjusted from farm 
town life to city life? I was really kind of worried most for Echo because goats for, for two years, that's all she was around and herding and watching them. So I was worried how she would adjust, but she actually did really well. She's put her energy in, into other things. So she'll, she loves, if I open up the back door, immediately gets her ball and puts it down. So she'll want to play ball and she does that. And I think having the cat also gave her a sense of job as well. So that's why she's always over there checking on the cat. So I think that they've done it better than I would have expected, honestly. What are the top three tips for owning a dog? Be patient. You have to be consistent. A lot of times people have really good dogs, but they're like, my dog doesn't listen. It's because they're not being very consistent. You do the same thing over and over and over and reward that however you do and they'll pick it up. Remember that this animal loves you. Usually, usually, not all the time. You might have an animal that doesn't, doesn't like you at all, but most of the time this animal absolutely loves you and their entire life is based around yours and they're they're looking towards you this entire time your dog's life there is completely based around yours just try to keep that in mind and what are three tips of owning cats don't don't and don't <laughs> no um uh, keep the litter box clean goodness gracious i don't like doing it so uh we we just had a, a baby and so while you're pregnant apparently you can't clean a litter box so i did this for nine months and i'm sick of it i'm absolutely sick of cleaning litter boxes and i only like one of the cats not the, nothing against cats but i'm not a cat person I only and i'm friends with one of them did your dogs welcome the new baby into the pack uh yeah they did so arlo once you see some videos of arlo you'll kind of understand what kind of mindset he is he's just kind of just all over the place so he knows the baby's there and but echo was the one that's really noticed and if you say hey you know the baby's up here she's very cautious she's looking she'll she'll check on the baby it's it's uh, it's it's pretty adorable if your dogs could turn human for a day what would they do Ooh, probably still play ball all day they would that's what they would want they would want to play catch all day i think arlo would probably just want to eat everything that he possibly could bridge <laughs> How does having dogs affect your life? Uh, it affects it. it it's a, a responsibility like a like a child. You are literally the dog's entire life. Uh, they're financially a responsibility as well. You know, you take your children to the doctor. You need to take your your animals and your pets to the doctor as well. So it, it, it's a great responsibility, honestly. And do they inspire you at all? Or do they bring a certain calm or peace to your life or anything? Yeah, um, so especially Echo, um, I'm a very strong supporter of um, helping like uh, mental illness. And I have anxiety and I have depression and stuff that a lot of people actually deal with on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. And something that I knew is that, that it could maybe help me calm down. And she has been the, the perfect dog for that. She'll come up and she'll literally lay her head on you. She'll just get up. I mean, you could just tell that the dog loves you and is there. And um, and she does the same thing for my fiance, Mackenzie, as well. Uh, when she wasn't feeling good or when she and when she was pregnant, you know, Echo would really be right there uh, with her, holding on to her, loving on her, you know, hugging her. It's it's. I'll send you some pictures of that too. It's awesome. Well, this is great. Thank you for letting us get to know Arlo and Echo today and as well as your cat troop too. That was an unexpected bonus. So where can everybody find you? So if you just search Colt Graves, uh, I'm Colt Graves on, Colt underscore Graves on Instagram. Uh, I'm Colt Graves on Facebook. Um, and then you can also listen to the music on all streaming platforms. Thanks for being a guest on Industry Pets. You are amazing. Hey, thank you so much. I appreciate you.